Good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Code Forces round 702. However, in the past six days, I have done a total of seven Code Forces contests, and that's a lot. Um, both contests on Code Forces and other places, but a total of seven contests in the past six days. So instead of taking this one seriously, I'm going to have a little bit of fun instead and do a, a medley version of it. And I'm making the rules up for it here right now. So the rules are every problem that I solve, I have to solve in a different language. And not just like a different version of the same language. So I can't use like Java 8 and Java 11 because those are just basically the same language. And they're probably like four different versions of C++ out there anyway. So uh, yeah, that's not allowed. However, um, the one exception to that rule is Python 2 and 3, which are kind of different versions. But in practice, they're basically just different languages. So there's that. I also don't have to go in order. I can solve the problems in whatever order I want. And the goal is to solve as many problems as possible. Custom invocation is allowed. Here we go. Um, OK. Also, I, I, I'm starting with problem G. I started this about seven minutes ago, and then I showed on camera something that I wasn't supposed to. So I'm re-recording that so that I don't have to edit it out. But yeah, here we go. Um, anyway. Back to, well, let's just copy our template from something else. Back to problem G. So the idea for problem G is there are a couple things that matter to us. Uh, we'll just start with implementation. So, in like this. Uh, actually, we're only solving one problem in Java today, so this shouldn't be that important. But anyway, okay. So we want to read. The number of numbers on the disk and the number of questions. This is very easy because this is Java, so so I know what I'm doing here. Um, but yeah, okay. So int n equals this, and q equals this. So then we want to store every time we hit a new prefix sum. Um, yeah, eight zero. We want to put this in x zero, then int i in a. Well, no. i equals one. i is less than n I plus plus. Uh, prefix sum plus equals eight i. Prefix sum is a new max. Then we want to say prefix sums dot put a new prefix sum uh, first i elements. Okay. So um, then for int q equals zero, q is less than the number of queries, q q plus plus. So this is the uh, target this thing. If target is less than or equal to prefix sums dot last key, then we want the ceiling value. C++ 
ceiling entry of target dot get value and then continue. So then if prefix sum is less than or equal to zero, otherwise then it's impossible, so we just print negative one. Otherwise int number of tries equals the number of times we need to add before it'll be in our range. So, um, okay, so I guess int real delta would be, oh, these need to be longs, don't they? Yeah, these all need to be longs, okay. So, uh, this can be an integer, this needs to be a long. And we need a long prefix sum and max prefix sum. And this needs to be a long, next long. Okay, so this is like the amount that we'll need to increase by the prefix sums. That's going to be target minus prefix sums dot last key. Okay, so uh, long delta or like long cycles will be prefix sum amount plus prefix sum minus one divided by prefix sum. Okay, so then long total turns will be cycles times n plus prefix sums dot ceiling entry. The amount left will be. Target minus prefix sum times cycles dot value. Let's see if this works. Zero six two negative one. Uh, what's up here? So. So this is the first turn, here's the second. When is the sum at least negative two? Oh no, two, two, okay. So the array is negative two, zero. Sum is never one. Is the sum ever two? Continue. Okay, that looks looks right. So now print writer, and then we're good. Okay, print writer here, print writer here. This should be out that print space. You have to have printed space as well. This should be out dot print a space. This should be out dot print line. And then we need an out dot close. Looks amazing. Okay, submit to problem G. That's our Java submission. Okay. So we should actually have um, zero listening today. It's already solved. And we, what? Runtime error, test one. For real? 
is test one not samples. Custom invocation. The input is this. The code will be this. This is really a runtime error. Silly mistakes. Okay. All right, so that's problem G. Drawing answer test two. Think about this for a minute. Read in the array. Max prefix sum and our prefix sum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, that's one bug. Let's just submit that. Awesome. All right. So that was a bit messy. Let's move on to uh, ooh, this looks like the next hardest one from E or maybe not. Maybe people are just going backwards. It's quite possible. Let's read equalize the array. Polycarp was gifted in oh, what language? I think C++ probably the next next easiest. Uh, gifted an array of length n, he consi considers an array beautiful if there exists a number c such that each number in the array occurs zero or c times. Polycarp wants to remove some elements in the array to make it beautiful. For example, if n equals 6, and this is the array, the following options to make it beautiful. Remove the element at position 2 and 5. Oh, every element occurs the same number of times. Gotcha. Determine the minimum number of elements to remove from the array to make it beautiful. All right, so we need the counts of everything. Yeah, we need to know the counts of all elements. And we need to know how many times those frequencies occur. And then we can say every time, like we can sweep through whatever C is and then we get all of the things that, or we get really, yeah, we just get the things that are bigger than that times C. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so hmm, how do we do this? Let's VS code. For some C++ here, um, open up my other workspace, competitive programming practice. Okay, so here's my make file. Let's, this is problem f, f.cpp is problem f. Okay, 
So then f.cpp will keep all of these things. All right. So int t c oh you guys can't see anything. Did you see anything for this? Maybe not. Oh well. Oops, my bad. C n t t t equals zero. T t is less than t. T is plus. Um. Okay, we're done with the clips. Following. Okay, so remove elements of position two and yeah. So just the array. Okay. Well, what do we want? We want a hash set of occurrences. Yep. So map of int to int um, frequency. And then for int i equals, oh, we need n. n, c, n, n. Uh, int ai, c, n, ai. Oh, we need fast IO. So iOS base sync with SDO, cn that tie zero, co that tie zero. I do actually know C, believe it or not. Um, surprisingly. I've had to convert enough times that I've picked it up. Um, so then if frequency dot count. AI to go to zero, then frequency AI dot count or frequency AI equals one, else frequency AI dot or equals frequency AI plus one. You might be able to do plus plus here, I'm honestly not sure. So now we want to know the counts of each frequency. Or like, yeah, yeah. We want to know like a, yeah, basically. You know what I mean? We want to have like a, a delta array here, like a, a count frequency count of the frequency map. So vector int frequency ISFF. Sure, good enough. Um make this size n plus one fill the fill with zeros so then for a pair of ints in the frequency map ff at ii dot second um plus plus so there's one more occurrence of whatever this frequency is So then, we want to brute force what c is. So for int c equals one, c is less than or equal to n plus plus. Um, long missed count is zero. We also probably want the number of different. Yeah, we want the number of different values with a frequency greater than us. So this is just an int this count equals zero. We also want int and equals zero. Let's wait, the minimum number of elements need to remove. Okay. So then C out n minus ants and L. So this is the maximum number we can keep. Um, ants equals max of ants and c times the frequency dot size minus this count. And then this count plus equals frequency plus equals ff at c. Okay, let's make this. Oh, cd is c plus plus. We 
Okay, some stuff is going on. I can't see what's going on here. Let's, okay. No matching function for max and size type. Should be an int, I think. Good. All right. Uh, let's run it. Two, one, two. I think that's fine. Submit. So we're doing problem F in language, some of the C languages. We got it, we got it. Now, see, this isn't getting any easier because, uh, well, who knows? All right, accidental victory. What language? I don't know, let's read it and figure out in a moment. How about that? A championship is held in Berlin in which N players participate. So the player with number I has AI is greater than one tokens. The championship consists of N minus one games, where e which are played according to the following rules. In each game, two random players with non-zero tokens are selected. Two players with non-zero tokens, okay. Oh, initially everyone's got some tokens. Then you pick two players who don't have any tokens. The player with more tokens is considered the winner of the game. In the case of a tie, the winner is chosen randomly. Okay, the winning player takes all the tokens. The last player with non-zero tokens is the winner of the championship. All random decisions that are made during the championship are equally probable and independent. Which players have a chance of winning? So which players, yeah, which players can win? Okay. I see. So, uh, if you're the minimum, you can't. If you aren't the minimum. You get your entire prefix sum repeatedly, just until that works. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I can do this. Um, what about? Let's do it in. Let's do it in Python. How about that? Uh, do I have Python? Python 2? I have both of them. Okay, good. So, yeah, okay, so we can make a whatever.py thing here. So, new file. Let's do e.py. Um, is there going to be too much input? Oh, no. Okay, how do you do input in Python? I think it's t equals int input. So Python three e dot pi. Okay, good. We got this. Okay, so for uh, i or for t t in the range t. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right. That's how Python works. Sorry, let me make this bigger for people. Uh, we're gonna need to keep the console here because I don't know what I'm doing yet. Uh, so int no n equals int input. I really hope I can read information. Uh, a equals Python read int array. Yep, list map int input Okay, so then we want, sure, go ahead and install that. 
uh, installing, come on. Um, So then we probably also want each prefix sum. Do we have a big time limit for this? No, not really. Ooh, uh oh, uh oh. Maybe I should have been doing this in Kotlin. Uh, equals. Empty list, good, okay. Yep, let's just do some Python 3 in the terminal here. How about this? Python 3, so we can have a equals this, a dot push 5, a dot add 5. Insert, or append. So it's fast, good. So uh, prefixes equals this for um, i, well let's say prefix sum equals zero. Prefixes equals just zero, how about that? Well prefixes dot, at, or dot append the prefix sum. Semicolons. Okay, fine. No semicolons. So for i in range n, then prefix sum plus equals i prefixes dot append the prefix sum. All right. So we have that. Good. What was the problem again? Which players can win? Oh, we should probably just sort this array, huh? Python sort. Is the list and an array the same thing? That sort, okay. Uh, is that in place? A dot sort, looks like it. Okay, so now we can say we want to find the answer. Okay, so int, or the answer is equal to zero for i, I in range n if we can't reach the next thing. So if prefix sums at i. i plus 1 is less than 8i, then ants equals i plus 1, 8i plus 1, I plus 1, yep, then print ants, okay. Wait, what do we need to know? Print the number of these players in increasing order. So everyone but one can. Prefix sums is not defined. 
Oh, should be prefixes. X is out of range. N minus one. Okay, so we can have an A equal to 1, 2. What's A? A is 1, 2. Um, well, nope. Okay. A equals 2, 1. B equals A. So if you A dot sort, then A is this. What's B? B is the same thing. Oh, okay. A equals one, two, B equals array. Or I guess what if we list of A? A at one equals four. Okay. So array equals list of A. You guys watching this are probably like, man, this guy, he knows no programming. How does he even have a job? But yeah, I don't know. Being good at job is helpful. Okay, so we need to print the number of things that work. Int int equals zero for i in bridge. If i is greater than or equal to ants, then count plus equals one. Because Python doesn't have plus plus. Print count. Uh, for i in bridge, if i nope can't do that. Uh, for i in range of n, if bridge i is greater than or equal to the answer, then print. I followed by space. I think that's how you do it. And then just print a new line, I think. Print just two. this so two four three one two three there's one person who can win that is person two Code is wrong. Okay, prefixes that append prefix sum. Prefix sum plus equals i in range i equals a at i. Or we can just do for each i in a. Okay. 
Okay, so it's right. How do I Python print if thou art new line? Okay, end equals space. No. Let's submit it. Python, oh, PyPy. What is PyPy? I think that's Python. Let's try it. So I've been doing this in Python 3. I don't know that we're going to finish this contest, ladies and gentlemen. This is very disappointing. All right, well, let's keep moving. Keep her moving. All right, problem D. Permutation transformation. A permutation is a sequence of length n integers from 1 to n, which all the numbers occur exactly once. We know what a permutation is. Polycarp was recently gifted a permutation of length n. Polycarp likes trees more than permutations. So he wants to perform, he wants to transform permutation a into a rooted binary tree. He transforms the array of different integers into a tree as follows. The maximum element becomes the root. All elements to the left of the maximum form a left subtree, so it's a Cartesian tree, I think. Um, or maybe it's just a, yeah, yeah, it's a Cartesian tree. All elements to the left, but if there are no elements, then it has no left child. Okay, got it. Let D denote the depth of some vertex. Note that the depth of the root is zero. Given a permutation A for each vertex, find the value of its depth. Oh, it's just that easy. Okay, so find the max. So you want to find the first thing bigger than you to your left or your right. Yep. Um, okay, so um, we have Python 2. I think Python 2, I'm just going to write Python 3 code. I don't actually know any Python 2. I'm just going to write Python 3 code and hope it works. So let's make a new file called uh, d.py. d.py would be nice to have. OK, so t equals this. Maybe, maybe Python 2 is not in the spirit of the game. Oh well, n equals int. equals map or equals a list of a map int to input dot split. What? <laughs> Invalid syntax. Oh, should this be raw input? Good, all right. So, what do we have from this? So now for each 
Well, we want the max. So we okay, yeah. So four. Uh, I don't know how to go down in for loops, but we can worry about that later. I in range n. Um, the target will be n minus i. We don't do ints. No ints allowed. Target equals n minus i. Okay. So now we want the index of this. So if if a at j is equal to the target, then index equals j. All right. So for okay. So int. We also want an answer. Uh, Ants equals a new list of size n. I don't know how to do that, so we'll just clone a, maybe? Yeah, that sounds fine. What could go wrong? Uh, list of a. How about that? Okay. So if i equals 0, then ants at index equals zero. Yep. And then finally we need to print well for i in range n print um a i with end equals space. Okay, so now here we need to actually build this array. This is very messy, but we can try. If an x equals zero, our depth is zero. For j. Okay, so if j is less than index, well, okay, yeah, index and a at j is greater than target, then bigger int b4 equals j, l with j is greater than index, and a at j is greater than target, and bigger int after is equal to minus 1, then bigger int after equals j. Uh, okay, ants equals zero. Ants at index equals, well, I guess we shouldn't even need this here. Ants at index, oh, okay. Sum equals, oh, okay, can't call it that. We'll just say s equals zero. Okay, ants at index equals sum. So now if bigger in p4 is not equal to negative one, then s plus equals ants at bigger int b4 if bigger int after is not equal to negative 1 then s plus equals ants at bigger int after
what come on can I print without a new line end equals what can we do this at least Invalid syntax, really? Is that really an invalid syntax? Not according to this. Maybe it's not Python 2. 2.x. Oh, whoa, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. So this is working. Now we just need to actually fix the code so the code is right. So if uh, we have the bigger index before and the bigger index after, we want whichever one is smaller. Yeah. is negative one, then it's bigger index before plus one. I'll if a at bigger end before is greater than a at bigger end after. <clears throat> so index before is bigger, so build after the index after. I guess this is just else. Else the index before. The index before me is bigger. Or is smaller. Okay. This is the messiest code I have ever seen. Good, good. Um, so where are we printing something that we don't want here?
three five two one four. Okay. One prints a zero. Four four three one two. Zero one three two. Looks good. All right, submit to Python two. This is D, right? D, okay. So we are right about on track. We're right about on track. Okay. All right. Ugh. You were given a positive integer x. Check whether x is representable as the sum of cubes of two positive integers. Formally, you need to check if there are two numbers, a and b, such that a cubed plus b cubed equals x. Is there any number that isn't? I guess, OK, apparently. So 4 isn't. Um, oh, sum of 3 cubes is like the famous one, right? 4 and 34 aren't. Hmm, so you should use 64 the integer type in your programming language. All right, so now the question is, what language are we using? Because we've burned our Python. OK, I guess there's both Python and PyPy. Fun that that worked. Um, all right, so we used Java. We could use C. Let's do C. Do I know C? Uh, how do I do C? OK, so GCC. Do a C program. We also have Kotlin. Kotlin. Oh, let's do Kotlin sometime. All right. Let's let's do. Well, this is problem C, right? Yeah, it's problem C. We might as well do it in C. What else? Come on. Of course. So new file. C dot C. That's hilarious. I love it. Okay. C hello world. that thank you very much gcc c.c c.c oh dot slash okay good um all right so what is the problem here we want to let's get problem c read the number of test cases first let's scan f what are C long long? Does C have long longs? It does. C is practically just C plus plus. Anyway, oh well. Um, okay. So long long uh, T scan F. How do I read this? Send LLD num three. Yeah, percent LLD. Percent LLD even T. Oh, do I need to do and T? I think I need to do and. Yeah, I think it's that. So then, is x a sum of two cubes? Um, mm -hmm. So 
So what is the runtime if we just check all things small enough? Cube root of n, cube root of x squared, right? So 10 to the fourth squared. Wait, cube root of this is 10 to the four. Yeah. So we can't, we probably can't do cube root squared. Does mm, C have hash set? I don't want C++. I implement a set? Are you serious? Okay, uh, I guess we're doing a binary search. So, long, long cubes. So for okay, this is kind of confusing. For and i equals zero, i is less than max n, i plus plus cubes at i times long, long i times long or Good, so that should give us all of our cubes. So now we need a bool is cube int x int min dex equals zero. Well, min dex yeah, equals zero. Max dex equals max n minus one. While min dex is less than or equal to max dex mid equals min dex plus max dex over two. Uh, so in this case, return false. Return zero, we don't have these. All right. <laughs> okay, so we have the mid. So if cubes at mid is equal to x, Turn one cubes at mid is greater than x, then max dex equals mid minus one. Else min dex equals mid plus one. All right. So come on. Four long long to try equals zero to try is less than max n to try plus plus if is cube uh, x minus to try times to try times to try scan f no print f So what do we need to do here? Um, we can't break. I don't think, does C have break? We do have a break. I think if the binary search is right. Um, okay. T 
two positive cubes. Okay, let's stop this. So Why is this the case? Do I save this? Try equals one. Yeah. Oh, and min index has to be one. Seven, one, no, two, yes. Four, no, thirty four, no, thirty five. Yes, seems good. I mean, I guess we can just try these, but last ones are oh, rot row. No, yes, no, no. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, this I'm printing no. One nine seven nine six. Wait, wait. Am I even printing it correctly? Or am I even reading in the right number correctly? Is the next question. Looks right, probably. Wait, is it not right? What? Five, seven, seven, nine. Is my binary search wrong then? This cube is bigger than X. 
than the next, the next is one less, otherwise the min index is one more. Um, okay, so then what is this pro this thing? It's not a cube. Shouldn't be an int, should be a long long. There you go, alright. Good, 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 good. Okay, delete this. Um, okay. Amazing, submit. Submit problem C. And C, where's C? Submit C and C. Ugh. All right, two more problems left. <laughs> Whew. That was a mess, okay. Balanced remainders, you're given a number n, divisible by three in some array. In one move, you can increase any of the array elements by one. Formally, you choose the index i and replace ai with ai plus one. You can choose the same index multiple times for different moves. Let's denote by C0, C1, and C2, the number of arrays that have remainder 0, 1, and 2 when divided by 3. Let's say the array has balanced remainders if they're all equal. For n equals 6, then the following sequence of moves is possible. Initially, C0 equals 1, C1 equals 2, C2 equals 4. Okay, so we have three integers we can move one from here to here, one from here to here, and one from here to here. Very good. Um, what about Kotlin? Do I have IntelliJ? I do have IntelliJ. Let's do some Kotlin. So the idea is we read in the array, and we read in, yeah, we read in the array, then Um, we just keep modifying it as long as keep modifying our three numbers as long as we need to. That'll be fast enough. Okay. Kotlin, Kotlin, Kotlin. Let's look up Kotlin Hello World because I don't remember. Um, is this it? Okay. Looks like fun to me. Okay, thank you for tip of the day. All right. What will our next one be in? We're gonna have some trouble, aren't we? 
Uh, I could do some JavaScript. Oh, I could learn what's um is it, is it Ruben who does Delphi? Could maybe do some some Delphi. Maybe some C sharp. Go. Oh, Go sounds cool. Haskell. Learn Haskell. Uh, I don't know. That's so much going on here. Okay. Can we? Are we running it? Is it being run? Five, four. Hello, four. Um. Read line. Does do we get return types here? This is a string. Can I get read int? There is no read int. Well, maybe it's just the same as Java. Ah, that two int. All right, here we go. Boom, that's exactly what I need. All right, thank you. So, there t equals read line dot two int for, uh, there might be a clean for each loop in Kotlin. Kind of clean, isn't it? It's kind of clean. So for tt in zero all the way up to I guess one to t. Um, let's just do this. Print. Can we run it, please? Or do I run? Ah, run. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Um, awesome. So we have our input. Uh, what do we need from here on out? So we need n and then the array. So. Bear n equals read line that to int. Sorry, you guys can't see this. I can't zoom in. How do I zoom in? Um, I'm I'm really sorry. I don't know how to zoom in. Oh, I feel bad. mouse wheel. No, it's not. I'm doing that right now. This is IntelliJ, right? File, settings, editor, general, file, settings, um, editor, general, There we go. Good. Now people can read. All right. So that's n. Their a equals read line dot split space dot map.
Okay. So now we need, okay. Zeros val counts all zeros equals a dot count x where x mod uh where Kotlin count occurrences or count of things satisfying. No, come on, come on. I don't know what this is called. Is it it? Uh, uh huh, that's kind of weird. I wonder if this stands for iterator or if this stands for the English word it. Like, count the number of things where it mod 3 is 0. I don't know, maybe. 0, 1s, and 2s. All right, so val turns equals zero, and then we need to print line turns. How about that? Sounds right to me. Okay. So while the max of zeros, ones, twos times three is greater than n. Oh, they didn't do this. Come on, come on. Math.max. They should have made this change in Colin. That would have been nice anyway. Okay. Well, this, why do we have warnings? Should be replaced by a Colin function. Okay, let's do it right. Colin max. n over 3, and then the 2s to zeros, max of 0, 2s of n over 3, 
um, ones plus equals zero ones, twos plus equals zero uh, ones to twos, and zeros plus equals zero to or twos to zeros. Oh, I have these backwards. I have variant val backwards. These should all be val. That's why you just use var for everything. Anyway, um, zeros to ones minus ones to twos minus twos to zeros minus zeros to ones terms plus equals zero one plus zero or plus one to two plus two to zero run this okay looks good Mit problem B using Kotlin. <sighs> All right, we got it. Time for a Div 1A, hardest problem of the set. Polycarp calls an array dense. If greater than two adjacent elements dense if the greater of any two adjacent elements is not more than twice the bigger of the smaller that is quite the sentence yeah okay for any two adjacent elements if the yeah yeah okay what is the minimum number of numbers you need to add to make it dense Uh, it's either zero or one, right? What? No? To make it not dense. Wait. To make it dense. Oh, it has to be satisfied for all of them. Got it, got it. Uh, yeah, okay, so for every pair, yeah. So every adjacent pair, you keep multiplying by two till you get the next one. Okay, so we need to pick a language for this. I'm out of languages I know, I think. Um, should we learn Haskell? Would that be fun? Or what about Go? Let's learn Go. Looks like we're doing this in custom invocation in Go. Language Go. So here's the code. Run that. All 
All right, it's taking a while. Maybe we don't want go. Okay, so go read array from standard. Okay, this is kind of gross. This is a disgusting language. Um, okay, <laughs> next language. Uh, Delphi, what does Delphi look like? What, here we go. That looks like a mess. Let's not do Delphi. Ruben is a very talented man, I am no Ruben. Um, OCaml? OCaml? That sounds old. What about C-sharp? I think I know some C-sharp. It's just like Java with all caps, right? No, let's do JavaScript. Okay. I love JavaScript. JavaScript, hello, or JavaScript read from, read from standard, okay. Yep, uh, acquire read line. Does this need to be node? Ah, so it's node, okay. Nope, go back, please go back. Yeah, that's what I want. Let's do... I think we can go back to Visual Studio. We have node, okay, yes. Crazy. Um, our read line. So node a.js, what does that give us? Some nonsense. Um, expected identifier. Do we need to require stuff? Readline is not a function. What? Readline is not defined. Saying, all right, how to read from standard in line by line? Call the read line method. Uh, JavaScript. Yeah, this isn't what I'm looking for, though. Maybe this works. So yeah, so it's got the new lines here. Gotcha. 
All right, so this is all input. <laughs> all right. Um, input dot split on a new line, I think. Line is not a function. What? I'm not calling read line. All input dot split is not a function. So, um, <laughs> how do you do JS string to int? Uh, parse int, is that it? We can try that. So, const t equals parse int all line with zero. There, line equals zero. So, line plus plus. Um, good. All right, so for let t equal zero, t t is less than t, t equals plus. Uh, yeah, these should all just be let, otherwise I'm gonna go insane. All right, and then console.log. So five test cases, good, amazing, int n, const n equals parse int all lines at line plus plus, come on, where is my code, give me problem a. Um, okay, so now we need da, so const array equals um, JS string to an array. This is so disgusting. Okay, equals Um, okay, so all lines at line plus plus dot math or dot split dot map uh, to number. I think that worked. So for let i equal zero, i or let I guess in equal zero, in plus one plus an n, in plus plus. Um, function count it for a b. Uh, let's equal zero. We can see. 
while a is less than b, a times equals 2, a equals f dot min, of a and b, while b is less than a, b times equals 2, a and b. Excuse me, I feel that. Alright, uh, moment of truth, does it work? Prince 2. Um, well, A times 2 is less than B. B times 2 is less than A. Problem A again. Copy it. Five, one, two, one, zero, three. Awesome. So, what are the chances this works? Submit code for A to be run in Node. Node.js. We got it. Let's go. All right. That was fun. That was fun. I had a lot of fun. Nice job. Colin won. Well, good for you, Colin. <laughs> you took it a little bit more seriously than I did. But, oh, it's kind of funny that I'm still beating people here. Uh, anyway, okay. Well, that was fun. So, there is, <laughs> there is my medley. Um, here you go. Ready? Node.js, Kotlin, C version 11, Python 2, Python 3, C++, and Java. Across the board, all different languages, solved set, uh, had the most wrong answers in the most convenient language. It's kind of interesting. These took like almost the same amount of time. I guess D was a bit faster because there's a very small difference between Python 2 and 3. But each one took about the same amount of time, I guess. Maybe the C++ was my fastest submit because the problem got easier and also it was in a language I knew. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun, I enjoyed it. Uh, we'll go over solutions real quick here. So for problem A, you just, this is, I guess this isn't very helpful, but yeah, whatever, here's the code. Uh, this is code in JavaScript, it's ugly code, but the idea is for every pair of integers right here, zoom in so you can see it a little bit better, for every pair of integers uh, down here, you keep track of how many times you have to multiply the smaller one to by two to be between half of the bigger one. So you just count it. Uh, and that's the idea for that. For problem B, what language is this? This was Kotlin. Um, you can repeatedly try, if you have too many things with a certain value, you can add one to it, make it the next value. 
you can just keep doing that until you don't have too many things with uh, too big of a value. There are cleaner ways of doing this in particular. So you can say, well, you, you have, like just go from zero, one, and two, and just keep pushing to the next one, and then you can do it in like order three plus input time. So yeah, there you go. Um, awesome. So that is that's problem. C, or that was B. Here's problem C. For problem C, you want to see if some integer they give you x is the sum of two cubes. So what you can do is brute force what one of those cubes is. There are about 10 to the 4 choices, assuming x goes up to 10 to the 12. So um, yeah, you've got 10,000 choices for the first element. For the second element, you just need to see, is this a cube? The easiest way of doing this, of course, is to have a hash set. So if you have a hash set, you can just say, does the hash set contain this cube? First, you add all the cubes to the hash set, then you check if it contains it. In C, as far as I know, there aren't any built-in hash sets because it's kind of a mess of a language. It's built a very long time ago, has not kept up with the times. So you can binary search instead of writing your own hash set. That works too. Uh, so that's what I did. There you go. Slip. Problem C in the language of C. Uh, for problem D, the question was, build a Cartesian tree. What's the depth of each node? There, are, I'm sure lots of people have code to build Cartesian trees already, but it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. What I did is, you can do this in, in linear time, I think. I'm pretty sure you can build Cartesian trees in linear time. But um, I, just like for each element, I go through the elements from biggest to smallest in the order of the permutation. And then I say, um, for, for some given element, I find the first thing after it that's bigger than it, and first thing before it that's bigger than it. And that's what these, this code's doing here. I also find the index of this element in the array. Okay, after I do that, if the thing that's after me, that's bigger than me, is, like if they're both, um, okay, if there isn't anything bigger than me, then I'm the biggest thing, so I'm the root of the tree. Otherwise, if I only have something um, before me bigger than me, then whatever the thing before me is, sorry, that's this line here, whatever the thing before me is, I'm that kid's child. If I only have something after me that's bigger than me, I'm that kid's child, or I'm that, uh, that node's child. Otherwise, whichever one of those things is smaller, I'll be the child of. So I'm that depth plus one. Then I print, I store my answer here, and then print it uh, at the end. Hopefully that made sense. Another way of doing this is just going from biggest to smallest and then seeing what was the last thing you filled in, right? What was the lower of the nodes? That's what you're the kid of. Um, you, you can probably do this in even easier ways. This is just how I did it. Okay, problem E was, yeah, so you have people fighting and then whoever has more coins gets all the coins of the smaller person or if there's a tie, either person wins. So what you can do is sort your list and then go through it in order. And whoever has, yeah, so like you only can't beat the person better than you. If, if you beat everyone worse than you, you still don't have enough coins to beat that person. So in other words, if your prefix sum is less than the value of the person ahead of you, you can't win. So I just go through all of the numbers. Obviously the best person can win. But for, for everyone else, if they can't reach the person better than them, if their prefix on can't reach the person better than them, then I make a cutoff at the next person. And then finally, all the people that can win are the people with values bigger than that cutoff. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm sick, but I guess I am. Anyway, so that is, yeah, that's solution to problem E. Uh, two more problems, F and G. Um, yeah, so for problem F, what was the problem again? Oh yeah, you want all the numbers to have a certain frequency. Excuse me, so you can brute force what that frequency is. If you know what the frequency you want everything to have is, then you can tell like how many elements have that frequency or more. How many values, sorry, have that frequency or more. So let's say we want a frequency of one. 
we want to see how many elements in this array have a frequency of one or more. So the one does, the three does, the two does, and the four does. There are four different elements with a frequency of one or more. And the frequency was one, there are four elements that have that, so we can keep six, or we can keep four elements if we have a frequency of one. If we have a frequency of two, uh, the one has a frequency of at least two, and the two also does. So there are two, two ways to keep a frequency of two, so again, there's four. Uh, nothing has a frequency of three, so the answer is zero. So what we're gonna do is store for each value what's its frequency, and then we wanna store how many values have each different frequency. So here's what that code looks like. Um, this is the frequency of each value. So for this value, this is its frequency. So I read in the array, and then I say, if I don't have any yet, the frequency is now one, otherwise it's the frequency it was before plus one. Now I wanna store how many values have each frequency. So for each of these pairs, which map some value to a frequency, I say, the number of things with the frequency, I want to increment by one. Then I brute force what the frequency I finally use is, so what C is, and my answer can either be this frequency that I use times the number of things that I can have it, or whatever it was before. Um, so this is the candidate. If my frequency is gonna be bigger than this, then everything with exactly this frequency is impossible. So I, I s remove those from how many I missed. Right, missed count is how many things have, how many different values have a frequency less than C. Uh, finally, I print the answer at the end. Answer is how many I can keep. So the number I have to remove is n minus that. All right, awesome. And then last problem is old floppy drive. For this problem, you have, um, yeah, you've got some array and you can Like you wanna see if you keep going through this array circularly, when does the prefix sum reach each value? So you can just do that naively, except the difference is the value can be really big, so you have to do it fast. And also you can have multiple queries, so you have to do it fast. So what the thing to notice is, we can figure out how many times we'll go fully around the floppy disk by just saying whatever the maximum prefix sum is, that's what we'll hit on the last time around. And then we wanna know the prefix sum when we go once around so that's how much it changes by. So we can figure out how much, how many full times, how many full loops will go around. And then we just need to figure out on the last time around, when's the first time through that loop that we hit the target value. So we can do that just using a tree set or a tree map. Uh, here's what that looks like. So we'll store all of the prefix sums in a tree map we store the prefix sum and then the first time we hit this. Now, really, we don't store all of the prefix sums. We only store the prefix sums that are a new best because the new best, like the ones that aren't negative, those are the ones where um, we where we might have a final answer. If the answer is negative or zero, that will never be the first time we hit some sum. So yeah, so we only store the new maximums here. Um, we store our prefix sum and also the best, and then we add this to our prefix sum. Uh, store it in this tree set if this is a new best. Then for each of the queries, this is our target value. This is what happens if we hit it in the first lap around. I guess you probably don't even need this to be honest, but uh, yeah, this is probably good to have. Probably good to have, anyway. Um, this is what happens if, you, if it's gonna be in the first time around. Otherwise, if the prefix sum um, is less than zero and you don't hit it on the first loop around, you're just gonna get farther and farther and farther away. So you'll never hit it, so it's just negative one. Um, in all other cases, you can figure out how many cycles there, there are. So that's um, how much you need to move until you get to something that you'll hit in the first prefix sum or in the last prefix sum, which is prefix sum amount. Um, and you wanna ceiling that with a division by how much you get from going around the circle once. So if you get three points from going around the circle once, and you need to have 10 points accounted for by going around the circle, then you have to go around the circle four times to get those 10 points. And then after that, you can use this tree map to see what's the first index that you'll hit, which will get the rest of the points that you need. 
and that's that's it. That's the solution to G. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you thought the the mashup was fun or uh, what's it called? Melee. Whatever. The different languages. If you thought that was fun, I thought it was kind of cool. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So fun contest. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.